Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to show you how to make this exact scene. We will be using Blender and we will be taking a look at how to make a very simple block out using extremely simple meshes, how to sketch for objects and choose vegetations that will work together. We will also be taking a couple of tips and tricks at how to maximize our lighting and get a very nice atmosphere. So this is for beginners, follow along. As you can see, I am starting with a stairs photo scan from Quicksold Bridge. It's called Japanese Shrine Stairs. Now download it at 4K specifically and export it. You could go ahead and choose 8K, but in this case I have used 4K. Now the material from Quicksold Bridge does not come optimized with cycles. So we would need to choose our correct resolution which is 4k in my case and add our normal map which will bring out a lot of details now these details wouldn't be enough so any minute i will add some displacement now make sure that the color space is set to non-color and it looks way too shiny at this point so what you will want to do is disable the clear coat make sure to plug the roughness map into the roughness input get rid of the clear coat unless you want some shininess of course and add your displacement now for the displacement i am not going to be using it in the uh, material shader i will be using it using the m modifier to have more control over the way it looks and the motor geometry so add a subdivision choose your own mesh and make sure to add the matte cap on in order to have a better look and choose the UV for the coordinates. Apply your scale and give it a strength and make sure that the medieval is correct. A mid-level is correct. Now in this case I found that 0.8 would work best so not 0.5. As you could see we already have a lot more details. Now we have a hero asset that will work really really well in our case. At this point we need to add a plane which will play the role of our terrain right so simply just add a plane at this point i don't like to extrude it and go ahead and subdivide it add a lot of geometry and you know just go ahead and play with proportional editing in order to adjust it onto our stair mesh you could go ahead and do the opposite but since we already have a stair mesh uh, you couldn't really remodel it or it, it would distort the mesh way too much in order to conform it with our terrain. Now don't just use the proportion editing, make sure to go ahead and use the tools that you have in your proposal, which are some sculpting tools, extremely useful, a lot more control and way faster for finer tuning. Now just go ahead and play with this, I like to keep it as low resolution as I could at this point before adding the displacement on the floor as well now i want a bit of uh, ground peeking from the uh, stairs and, and you will understand in a minute why i am doing that now i am adding a subdivision and we'll add our camera to start a simple scene layout and mostly to focus on the areas that will be visible the most now press n and choose the lock camera to view and this way you could just orbit your camera normally your viewport normally and the camera will align make sure to be using the compositional guides as well and that will help you to center out your image and get a relatively nice composition now at this point i am adding some slight displacement using the distorted noise you don't have to use distorted noise you could use a map you could use a cloud texture you could use whatever you want it won't even be visible but it might just add a little bit more interesting shadows once we scatter our objects on top now let's use cycles and gpu compute if you have that go to the preferences go to system and choose optics if you have a nvidia gpu in my case i run a 4070 so go ahead and add a simple 
light as well for the sake of processing now before that i will add the texture for our terrain go ahead and apply it and as you could see it has the same exact problems shiny and you know unworkable so you need to correct it make sure that the roughness is set to the roughness input and get rid of the clear coat if you don't want it shiny now we didn't distort our mesh or extrude it much so our uvs should still work so i'm just scaling it by 10 times like i started scaling our own mesh by 10 times in the beginning of the video add the displacement map in this case we'll be using it in the shader editor now let's say you don't really know the mid level go ahead and just sample a uh, the color from the what you might assume be in the mid level and as in this case i am sampling it from the material and it seems to be 0 0.5 exactly so this is a little handy trick now add a lamp a plain lamp for the sake of judging our displacement well enough why well, i didn't add the sky until now just for the sake of getting some slightly more fine-tuned shadows right so no color input just white color and some slightly harsh shadows so i would prefer to subdivide the areas near the camera which is why i'm pressing c and choosing the circular select and subdividing it by itself thus getting way more resolution in the places where we need so we don't need to subdivide the whole 20 meters of land and go ahead you know go back and forth between the proportional editing and the sculpting now let's start by scattering our base vegetation i will be using geoscatter you could use geometry nodes i will be making a tutorial about geometry nodes in this so in the soon future in this case i prefer to be using geoscatter now i got this from uh, quixel bridge as well Usually I use Max3 for work and everything, but uh, Quixel is really good as well. So make sure to be choosing it. Go to your and this and don't choose the empty as well. Go ahead and give one instances, and in the density scatter place scatter. Make sure to apply the scale and rotation on the Quixel mesh, and you have a nice. Uh, model but the materials wouldn't work from quixel bridge itself so you will need to slightly work on it you get all of the maps needed you get the opacity the translucency and the regular pbr workflow so we have one material which has the albedo the roughness and the normal map or bump map we mix it with a translucency map and we use it with a translucency material and we have a translucency map which we plug into the translucency color and we mix that material also with a transparent material and we use the opacity map provided to us by quixel bridge as well so make sure to be using the invert node as well you know in case everything is inverted or just switch the position now as you could see in front of you i'm just playing with the instances playing with the uh, rotation and in this case i want to keep it as surface normal so with this another tree for the trees i usually like to have global z on as some random scale some default scale and you know just try to make it look as irregular as possible make sure to be using the patterns i see fewer people using this and geoscatter makes it way easy for us you know we already have a musgrave texture and i will be just giving it some time and playing with it As you could see playing with the scale we'll probably also play with the uh, instances as well try to get a relatively bushy and dense flora 
Now, as you can see, I'm just playing again with everything, testing, seeing what works, what doesn't work. The more time they give it, the better it will look. I mentioned that way too much, but you know, it really does. So at this point, it became, the UI became very sluggish. So make sure to optimize this all the slight bit. Now before that, let's go ahead and catch it where we actually need it. So add a vertex group and add a vertex weight proximity modifier to our uh, floor mesh and choose for the target object our stairs mesh. Make sure to have the proximity mode set to faces and geometry. And as you could see, you have to choose your vertex group as well and we suddenly had a very nice procedural setup here. So instead of painting our own map, Blender does it for us based on the proximity of our stairs to the uh, to the plane mesh. Let's go ahead and use that in the GeoScatter add-on in the column masks. So before that, let's optimize it by adding some cam optimization and changing and adding a proxy mesh. As you could see, it made the viewport way less sluggish and way faster as well. Now make sure to invert the group. And you know, just get to play with this. As you could see, it, it changes uh, without us taking much time. Now, I have taken time to show you this, and I will be doing the exact same thing for the other types of plants. Exact same thing, optimizing it so the viewport is workable. Play around with it, play around with the random scale, with the random rotation. Just try to make it look random and uneven, more or less. Why am I even scattering many types of plants? For the simple fact that I want, obviously, many species there and I want an uneven level and a U saturation right so at this point I will also be adding some weeds from the botanic add-on which I will link down below as well it's a nice add-on it has a lot of uh, variety okay so I do the same here same thing cam optimization display random scale default scale random rotation and the column masks in this case i want to have another one in order to have more control so i want to specify exactly where this grows and as you could see i'm just doing this and i'm speeding it obviously so you get to do this specify exactly where you want you know sometimes you need to go ahead and stop automating things so so this looks about right make sure to be playing around with the vertical influence and we want this to be growing upwards not following the normal of our actual plane at this point this is very repetitive and you know this project took me around 40 minutes to complete so it would be wiser for you to spend more time especially if you want to use it as a portfolio piece this I won't put in my portfolio obviously since it's a very low effort and as you could see the nice thing with the weight proximity modifier is if we move our stairs it will update the weight map as well now let's scatter our bush which is a black locust from Quixel Bridge as well go ahead and scatter that you know obviously you need to work on the materials I have shown you how to do that previously I want to be showing every single mesh in order to make this video as concise as possible so go ahead and you know just try to find a nice composition go ahead with the random rotation and I like to play with the seed sometimes I spend like half an hour playing with the seed right if it's especially if it's something very specific and you know if it takes too much time to place by hand you know spending like 30 minutes playing with the seed is a good trade-off in all honesty now i like this so let's enable everything and check how this looks now we still need to scatter 
a different type of vegetation, which is, in our case, a fern. So from the botanic add-on, we'll go ahead to the plants and add a couple of ferns. Make sure to adjust their material to work with the already made plants. So if it has a yellow tint, make sure to uh, add some yellow tint to the other materials or vice versa. Just make sure that they belong to each other. We don't really want them looking out of place. Disable everything. I like to disable everything. And make sure to optimize the scene, play around with the, random, the randomization and the random scale. Seed as well. Extremely important. And we have an already nice result. Now it needs something very crucial, which is lighting. In this case, I will be using a sky texture. Honestly, sky textures are extremely underrated. HD rays are great, but sky textures extremely nice. Mostly for the control that they give you. Extremely convenient. Now you could go ahead and use a mix of both. Personally, I do a mix of both for most of my scenes. Now let's add a tree which will play the role of our gobo. We want to be seeing it at this point. So I don't really want to see the ugly part of the lower trunk in front of the camera, which is why I'm going to go to the object properties under the visibility, ray visibility, and we, we disable the camera and diffuse and glossiness and only leave the shadows on. So it only casts shadows but does nothing else. Now, at this point, what I want to do is also add a lot of uh, transparent light pads so we don't have any black halo. As you can see, this is way too uncontrasty for what we want. So let's disable the strength and add some sun strength as well. Now, just play around with the sun rotation, with the sun elevation, with the ozone with the dust and with the air until you get something that you like. There are no rules here, really. Just don't push it way too far. I want to have a shadowy foreground, so very dark foreground. So let's add a plane, give it a dark diffuse color and extrude it so a type of uh, hides our camera, engulf our camera, per se. Now, just go ahead and move it until it hides the blocks the light from areas that are near the camera so the foreground this gives us a way richer image and gives us a very nice effect so light blockers are used in photography so if you are a photographer you will know this so let's add a empty in order to work on our depth of field add your empty go ahead and choose your camera Choose the empty as a target and play around with the F stop until you get a result that you like. Make sure to leave it at a reasonable pace. So I left it at around 2.8, I believe, maybe less, maybe more. You know, as long as it looks good. It still lacks something, which are some trees. Where are the shadows coming from if we don't have any trees? Now, same thing, I'm using the botanic add on, which I think use displacement or a uh, photo scan but don't quote me on that i'm not sure so just add a couple of these around you know make this make sense per se and already it looks it looks way nicer now we want something also on the side as well as you could see i'm just going around and taking another look at the uh, vegetation that we added our scatter system so you know you don't really have to just move on from something you could go ahead and adjust it let's duplicate it and position it to where we want it to be positioned now we have a problem this is casting shadows so go ahead to the ray visibility and disable the shadows as well so we only see it but it's not casting any shadows you know you might say this is not physically this isn't physically correct but you know, I would say who cares if it's physically correct or not. We want to make a nice image. Believe me, photographers had the ability to fake things in real life. They would have. So why not use that? 
also add a cube add a volumetric to get some type of haze or dust roughly give it a very low density and some anisotropy maybe to get some god rays play around with it can't play around with the, all of the effect right and at this point it's important to start talking about the color management now in my previous video i have used uh, agx log in this video i will just keep it inside the blender to make this as short as i could i'm using agx i'm not going back to filmic in all honesty so as you could see we have made a really nice scene with under 40 45 minutes now your turn is to take this to photoshop and improve it as some post processing maybe add the mist pass you know go ahead and knock yourself out enjoy it change the lighting add some more fog remove the fog add different species so this is all fun now make sure to subscribe if you have enjoyed this give us a comment and if you have any questions drop them down below or join our discord or just you know message me on instagram and follow as well until next time take care and enjoy yourself